it's time for news and comment. First, the news. Hello again, and welcome to Christianity News Flash, where we investigate the scriptures and compare our findings with the beliefs and practices of traditional and or mainstream Christianity, all for the purposes, really, of separating biblical fact from Christian fantasy. This just in. According to the Hebrew Scriptures, what we commonly refer to as the Bible, hell is a big, fat, dirty lie. Hell does not exist. There is no hell. For centuries, churchianity, I'm sorry, I mean Christianity, has taught the fear-mongering doctrine of hell, an imaginary place of unending fiery torment for those who reject the one true God, uh, or simply don't believe in the one true God, or worse yet, have never heard of the one true God, but they didn't accept him, thus they are doomed to this unfortunate, fiery fate. Well, never mind that this concept was unheard of in the Old Testament, never spoken of by the prophets, never mind that this idea was adopted from Greek culture and introduced post-8070. Why? Well, to manipulate the masses into fearful obedience or else, never mind all these things, let's just go on believing in hell because it seems to be the general consensus of those whom we assume know their Bibles. Or consider this. The most common word uh, for hell in our New Testament Bibles is the Greek word Gehenna, the equivalent of the Hebrew Geben Hinnom which is simply the Valley of Hinnom located just outside Jerusalem. Jesus referenced, or he used this exact place to warn of the local judgment on unrepentant first century Jews. Why? Because it was this exact place, the Valley of Hinnom, or hell, that would serve as the final destination of many in Jerusalem. In truth, to this day, the Valley of Hinnom really is a, a lush valley outside the walls of Jerusalem and is a tourist attraction to this day. So every time, every time Jesus used the word hell or Gehenna, he associated it or he applied it specifically to that location and to the Jews. The truth is, Gehenna was actually a huge garbage dump outside first century Jerusalem uh, in the Valley of Hinnom. It burned almost constantly, some records say 24 hours a day, and was uh, where all things that were useless or unclean or even despised were thrown out or thrown into. It was also a place where the outcasts gathered, such as le leopards, where they scavenged uh, food and clothing amid the, the rotten garbage full of worms and maggots. Uh, centuries before that, it was a graveyard, and it was even a place, catch this, where Israel had sacrificed children to pagan gods. Jeremiah 7, 30 and 31. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, says the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet which is the valley of the son of Hinnom, there's your gay Ben Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come to my heart. This really ticked God off. <laughs> so what do you think resulted? Well, fiery judgment in that very same valley of Hinnom via the Babylonian army. Jeremiah 7, 32. Therefore, the days are coming, says the Lord, when it will no more be called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they will bury in Tophet until there is no room. Now listen to this. He says in 33, the corpses of this people will be food for the birds of heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and no one will frighten them away. Now, that really paints a picture of all these dead bodies basically piling up in the Valley of Hinnom, doesn't it? 
Well, that sounds an awful like, like the picture that Jesus painted in Matthew 24, Luke 17, Luke 21, Mark 13, describing the final judgment upon Jerusalem when the Son of Man would come. Some would be taken in judgment, some would not. Some would escape. Just like Jeremiah described uh, a picture of dead corpses in the Valley of Hinnom near to his day, so too Jesus in his day and his audience would have recognized the language. Matthew 24, 27. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Listen to this. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles or the vultures will be gathered together. Paints that same picture now, doesn't it? So by the time the first century rolled around, the valley was basically a burning garbage dump. This was Gehenna. This was hell. This was where Jesus warned many of them would end up in hell in the soon or coming impending judgment. So what does this mean? Well, biblically defined, hell was simply the end of the old covenant system. It was the final destination of that covenant and of those who clung to it during the first century, rather than cling to Christ or grab to Christ, to enter the ark of Christ, uh, flee to the mountains and escape the, the flood of judgment that was about to come on that generation. The judgment was upon Israel and that resulted in the hell fires of Gehenna. That's it. And at this point, you might ask, what about all the descriptions of hell being uh, eternal and everlasting and forever and all that? Well, actually, there are many Old Testament examples of local judgments on nations uh, described just this way. A perpetual burning of fire, or like in, in Revelation, where the smoke rises forever. Isaiah 34, 8 through 10 comes to mind. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Its streams shall be turned into pitch, and its dust into brimstone. Its land shall become burning pitch. It shall, it shall not be quenched day or night. Its smoke shall ascend forever. From generation to generation, it shall, not wait, or shall lie waste. No one shall pass through it forever and ever. See, we have to understand these were simply very descriptive uh, Hebraic metaphor for local judgments. Judgments by fire, judgments by burning and smoke. You might recall John the Baptist entering the scene and warning of a soon coming judgment by fire. All the Old Testament examples really serve as shadows, uh, typological shadows of the final age-ending uh, fire judgment that would fall upon Jerusalem in 70 AD. So when the New Testament spoke of the end of their covenant world in terms of hellfire, unquenchable fire, lake of fire, everlasting punishment, uh, where the worm never dies, the smoke of their torments, I think it is, and so on. We mustn't think, think in terms of a, uh, a literal, eternal, ongoing, never-ending torment that's more aligned with our Western-minded literalistic thinking. No, 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 no. We have to try to understand how the original audience would have understood these things. The Jews were very familiar with this kind of language because it was the language of their prophets. They got it. It was perfectly natural to them. They didn't need lessons in, in Hebraic apocalyptic language because they spoke it, they read it, they lived it, so they got it. There was no doubt they understood this language no other way than in relation to national judgment. 
So we need to think contextually, allowing the ancient Hebraic expressions to paint the pictures they intended to paint and the notions they intended to convey without adding our own ideas into the text. And admittedly, this is extremely difficult to do, considering most of us have been indoctrinated from birth into the, the concept of a literal conscious torment in the fiery flames of an eternal hell. And when that concept of hell is molded and pounded and saturated into our psyches, man, it can be difficult to even consider another paradigm. As history records, Rome surrounded Jerusalem starting around 67 AD and finally besieged it in 70 AD. Literally hundreds of thousands of Jewish corpses ended up exactly where Jesus said they would, in that very same Gehenna, that very same Valley of Hinnom, in the burning fires of Gehenna, the lake of fire, burning, smoking, stinking, rotting corpses of those who did not escape the wrath about to come that John and Jesus and his disciples warned them about. Jesus promised hell, and many of them ended up just there. I'll say it one more time. Hell was simply the final fate, the final destination of the Mosaic Covenant and those who remained in it to the end. And that end came in 70 AD. And now, the comment. You know, I think, honestly, with just a little bit of investigation, a little bit of thinking for ourselves and a whole lot of honesty, I think you too just might uh, uh, come to the, what I would consider the biblical and the inevitable conclusion. Hell, as we have been taught, it doesn't exist. Hell, as we've been taught, is a big, fat, no good, dirty <laughs> lie. And that's the truth, Ruth. Uh, I'd say that's good news is what I'd say. Uh, hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you go ask the one person you can trust, uh, the one person who knows everything about the Bible, the one person who, who has all the answers because he well, or she is paid to have the answers. You know who that is? your pastor. Go ask him or her. Ask your pastor. And I'm being a little bit sarcastic here. Ask him or her to provide scriptures that demonstrate or prove that, you know, um, a place of eternal conscious torment. Ask them to do that. Now, if they can do that, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I will show you or I can show you how those exact verses that they cite uh, are in fact contextually connected to nothing more, and I mean nothing more than the coming judgment on Jerusalem and the hellfires of Gehenna just outside Jerusalem. Folks, hell is a big, fat lie. That's it for now. We'll see you next News Flash. This has been News and Comment.